All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep. It's 418 2024. We're coming to you live here from the Monkey Lounge in the great state of Texas. And so before we get into what we're doing today's show about the uh, just America in a free fall, let me take you over here real fast to our sponsor for this show. This is going to be from the Satellite Phone Store. Um, you can find uh, over on sat123.com. If you are not in lockstep yet with uh, just having a solid communications plan, uh, satellite phone is going to be the best solution you can have. I have the Iridium 9555 satellite phone, and uh, my entire family has uh, satellite phones. And if uh, we get into a grid down situation, they're encrypted, they will more than likely work more than any other option out there. And so, uh, the, again, sat123.com, you can jump over here. The Satellite Phone Store has tons and tons of things to offer you. They've got a lot of little kits, EMP kits. They've got these Faraday bags, um, MR Sat phones. Uh, they come with 100 minutes or text. And uh, it's a 15-month agreement, but uh, that is a nice phone. Uh, and then if you want to really go super nice phone, uh, the Iridium 9555, that's exactly what I have. It is uh, the best one out there. You don't have to really look at all for uh, the satellite link. You basically, anywhere from a view from a window or just walk outside, boom, you are, are up and running here very quickly with this sat phone. Very solid. They have a bunch of other things too. Uh, all kinds of solar uh, support. Uh, with these kits, they've got the Bivy, they've got uh, Galileo services that come with the Bivy, again, and bundles uh, if you're looking for that. So uh, that would be sat123.com, that's sat123.com, or give them a call, 941-841-0844, uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm telling you, you will be very happy that you did this for your family and yourself. Okay, well, listen, let's get into the deets. What we got going on out there, uh, we've talked in the past just about the whole uh, U.S. being just in a, in a state of free fall. Whether it is uh, that we are under some type of uh, judgment, I firmly believe that, or whether it is at the hands of uh, you know this current government intentionally doing this to us, I firmly believe that too. I think, honestly, it's a mix of both. Remember, Isaiah 55, 11 always tells us that everything goes according to God's will. So whether it is man-induced or whether it is God-induced, uh, it is all going to and according to his sovereign plan for us. So let's do this. I want to take you over to uh, something that we talked about in the past when we talk about America in a free fall, and that is the fact that uh, we are following, there were nine things that happened to Rome, ancient Rome, when it collapsed. And uh, we're following those steps. I mean, almost like, like a grocery list, okay? First one up, just remember, political instability, right? Frequent changes in leaderships uh, that happened uh, within Rome. We're seeing it here. I mean, how many House speakers have we had uh, in the last two years? It's just been crazy. But it doesn't just stop there, right? Uh, just our ability to ineffectively govern uh, I think our deep state is overriding everything in a panic because Donald Trump is coming online. They're going to do everything they can to stop him. And, and I, I don't even take the nuclear option off the table. I think that is even potentially possible with our deep state. And I'm going to talk about something, uh, Operation Northwoods, in a minute. If you don't think our deep state and our government is capable of doing something like that to keep somebody out of office and further their agenda— uh, you need to go back and look at the two pills, the red and the blue, and make sure you take the red one because uh, <laughs> we are clearly headed in that direction. So, okay, now check this out. Economic troubles, right? Uh, heavy taxation. Um, uh, it just look at where we are. Overproduction of currency, if that doesn't tell you anything, we are up to our eyeballs in debt to the point where we can't even hardly pay the interest on our debt and it, uh, it's accumulating uh, just by the month in, uh, in the trillions of dollars. So it's not a good situation. Then we took a, a, take a look at our military. The problems we have within the military, Rome had very similar issues. I, I don't know, actually, if they had guys dressing up uh, in full drag uh, that were, you know, full bird colonels and, and, uh, and commanders 
that is the issue we have, but it doesn't just stop at our uh, inability to effectively lead. It's also our inability to recruit. We, we can't seem to uh, have a big enough pool to, to bring people into the military. And of course, for those that are in, we can't retain them. The retention numbers are super bad. All right. And then the invasion aspect. Now, Rome, you know, they brought the barbarians in and they had the, uh, the vandals, et cetera, the Huns. Uh, they brought them in and uh, the military struggled to fend off these invasions. Well, we're not even fighting them off. We're bringing them in in droves right across our, our border and, uh, and we're even flying them in from uh, other countries, right, via our military. So uh, all, it has to be intentional, okay? And then you talk about the failed state. Well, look at the 50 states within the union right now and how many of them are uh, significantly in debt in the tunes of tens of billions of dollars, if not higher than that. California is a, is a failed state. They just haven't figured it out yet. They just keep writing checks that they can't cash. All right. And then uh, look at this faith aspect. Well, we just talked about the military dudes dressed in drag, uh, just completely our moral compass is shot. But on top of that, you, you have a president running the country. Well, maybe he's a puppet for somebody running the country that comes out on the day of Easter and says, today is trans visibility day. All right. It's uh, just uh, blows you away. Our moral compass is shot. And then, of course, the plague aspect. Yeah. I mean, look at what happened with COVID. And then we have so many different plagues that are threatening us right now from the monkeypox to uh, just you know, black plagues and to Ebola and this other disease X. We got all of these things threatening uh, our, our, <laughs> our very existence all on the horizon. And then, you know, you look at the overextension of the administration, right? We've got people that are in positions that don't have the knowledge to run or lead a country. Uh, Budigeg, perfect example, Department of Transportation. He doesn't know how to find his backside with both hands. Um, and, well, actually, he probably does. That uh, was not intentional. But I'm just saying this guy is not qualified to, to run that organization um, and he can't make proper decisions because he doesn't know anything about it. So um, we have that throughout our government body. It's incredible. So, and then the last thing is just being divided. If it's not the Dems and the the Republicans fighting with each other, it's us in general. We're we're all just so divided. And you, they say, you know, a house divided uh, will fall, and uh, we are seeing that. And so uh, that is just many, many things that uh, we are watching unfold uh, domestically. And, uh, but then there's all these uncertainties and chaos that are going on, these danger boxes. Let me just show you something as we get into it. Uh, this right here is uh, the East Coast. Last night, it was actually double boxed further out um, with these danger boxes all the way up the East Coast. We see it over here on the West Coast. We get over to this side. Look at this. Uh, these are all, all, I mean, danger boxes all over the place. And that is because uh, we are on the cusp of a major war breaking out. And uh, this, you know, I talked about the Club K's and uh, the, the threat with the naval aspect of things. And it's not even, you know, naval uh, warships. You're talking cargo containers and cargo ships that are taking out our infrastructure and bridge, barges free-floating down, uh, uh, you know, uh, rivers and taking out and colliding with bridges and, and damaging our infrastructure. It's just one thing after another after another, and it feels like the wheels have completely come off and we are in a state of free fall. So let's talk here. Let's go into, first let's talk Intel, all right? Let's uh, get into what exactly is going on out there intelligence-wise and uh, as you can see, it is uh, Texas is covered up, Southern California is covered up. But then you get uh, out of uh, the center of the United States, you get up near D.C. and just notice the amount of intelligence gathering flights. That one right there is literally right up the Chesapeake. Kind of crazy, right? Very, very active. And then we get over here, and this is just off the chain active. Again, Kaliningrad, that's Russia, doing a complete circle around them, the back and forths. This is just three days worth of flights. So there's definitely uh, a, a concern when it comes to Russia. 
What I don't really see too much of, I see just a little blip of stuff over the last three days over Israel, and then some stuff going on over Riyadh. Again, intelligence, don't see them over that, uh, the Saudi side of the house very often. And then we get uh, here, South Korea, Japan, down into Philippines. Now, there is an, a- an active exercise going on down in the Philippines, so um, that will probably see a little bit of an uptick. E6s, Takamo, take charge, move out. Look at uh, the flights that are up. This is the last three days. It looks to be very similar, if not the same, as it was the last time we got together. Uh, But that weird square box, I don't know what that is. It's just kind of a strange flight pattern for them. But we do see them coming down over the Gulf of Mexico. We see them going into the U.S. uh, Virgin Islands. That's the one we saw the other day. That is parked down there. Um, But, uh, again, uh, these are the airborne commands, right? And then the subhunters, kind of a little bit uh, interesting, some of the new movements. I see them down near Auckland. We see them down near Tasmania. Haven't seen that in the past. Um, and then we go up a little further north. You can see them headed into the Philippines near Manila, near Okinawa, Japan. And then let's get over here to Europe. And uh, what I only thing I see, which is really kind of concerning, I don't see anything in the Red Sea. I see nothing in the Med. I see nothing uh, in the normal locations. I see some stuff kind of going around Norway, out towards Iceland. Uh, More than likely, those are P8s. And then the U.S., the interesting aspect with the U.S. is just uh, uh, you can see them kind of leaving out of uh, Washington State, headed south, headed north. Got one headed up there to Alaska. And then the other looks to be kind of going down the, the coastline. And then, of course, near that danger box that we just talked about off of Southern California, And uh, the East Coast, pretty busy, pretty active off of, uh, uh, well, I guess off of Cape Canaveral. But there was some launches here yesterday uh, that's probably tied to that. Now, this is your R-135. Just notice the one flying down to Tampa, one headed down to Georgia, or that's actually South Carolina, I believe. And um, and then, of course, just notice uh, just kind of flying up and down that eastern front of Europe, Uh, looking into Belarus, into uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, and then stopping kind of at Ukraine, but then picking up some traces there, looking at Crimea. It uh, sure does feel like there's a lot of eyes focused on Russia. But at the same time, like I said the other day, uh, we've had uh, issues where, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of desert camo stuff headed to the Middle East, more so than anywhere else right now. So I think there's something up their sleeve. All right, AWACS, out to the, the Gulf of Mexico, just like the R-135. Um, and then you can see, and just like the E-6, right? And then you can see uh, off the eastern seaboard, again, right over the Chesapeake, over that general area where they've had, uh, well, they're looking at that ship that hit the uh, Baltimore Bridge. They do believe now maybe there is some criminal activity associated with it. And then Europe, you can see man in the middle, very hot and heavy over Germany into Poland, and then down towards uh, Italy into Greece, or sorry, Crete. And and then I see a little blip there near Constanta, all right? Again, this is AWACS, so advanced warning system. Nothing over anywhere in the uh, Middle East, and then nothing over Asia. So... Now, we are going to talk more about the Middle East when it comes to what is going on with the flooding. I'm going to show you some weather mod. Uh, That's our smoking gun. Uh, Very, very interesting stuff. All right. Okay, let's talk drones. Uh, As you get in the high altitude Q9, Q4 stuff out over the Black Sea. Uh, And then, of course, we've got some low altitude ones there uh, near Qatar. And then I see a little bit of activity off of Japan. Right, uh, and we see that every time we check in. Now it's a lot of drone activity going on there, and then I see some more transitions out of the west coast. It looks like they're headed to the east coast. All right, so that would be maybe some more Q4, Q9s heading out towards the east coast. I think that's the bigger threat, uh, other than the that that area of Southern California where they seem to be very focused, which is down here. But we get over here, and you can see, again, danger boxes, right? All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Flashbang. And it uh, looks like he's headed to Pennsylvania. Yesterday he was in Scranton. And um, the interesting thing uh, is that uh, you'll notice here 
that uh, he's still participating in a campaign event, which uh, the original chatter we heard was that uh, would come May uh, 1 or somewhere around early May that he was going to announce he was backing out. Let's see if it happens. I think that he is so stubborn that uh, he may just try to uh, uh, circumvent his handlers and uh, just go his own way thinking he actually has a shot at this. Maybe they will pull the same shenanigans they did last time. Who knows? Won't go well for him this time. But uh, let's uh, let's watch. Now, we talk about what's going on with Trump. We talk about the fact that um, the judges that are being appointed, the, the jurors that are being appointed are all very biased in nature. And uh, they're stacking the deck against them. This is a this is all going to plan. It's intentional. That's what they're trying to do. Wrap him up. He can't get on the campaign trail. He can't do a lot of things because he's in court trying to defend himself against something that he didn't commit. Okay, but let me just show you what our deep state and our leadership currently in. Uh, office right now are capable of doing. If you don't think that our government has it in them to pull off something like a 9-11, uh, well, let me just show you. There is, uh, this is overall my, my. I actually wrote a blog about this. This is on monkeyworks.com. Operation Northwoods, okay? It's, uh, this, this should wake us all up when you think about what was going on. This uh, happened in the early 1960s. And uh, there were some escalations between the United States and Cuba. Uh, but uh, if you uh, remember a book I've, I've recommended to you, if you haven't done it, it's uh, it's called The Devil's Chessboard. It goes into the details about Alan Dulles. He is the godfather of the deep state. Okay, But uh, what had happened during that time was the United States government decided that they were going to do false flag operations inside of the United States and then blame it on Cuba and then give them justification to go to war against Cuba. So these actions included uh, these false flag operations, such as actual sabotage uh, and terrorism against U.S. military and civilian targets inside the United States. <laughs> Let that sink in. All right. It uh, it was later discovered that this thing was was actually very far along in the works. Uh, but uh, they ended up not doing it. Uh, JFK basically shut all of this down. But um, I, 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 all I can say is that, uh, well, look, at the end of the day, they are very capable of actually doing this to us. And if you don't think they are, we need to all be staying very frosty because given the current environment and situation, we have so many different things that could take shape that would implode this country that uh, if they had anything in the works, in a skiff somewhere like uh, Operation Northwoods 2.0, uh, this is a big danger to all of us, okay? All right, so we talk about that, uh, the, the craziness that they're capable of doing, but let's talk about our debt, right? Foreign holdings of U.S. Treasuries hit a record high. Japan holdings rise, the data shows. Yeah, on average, about 30% of our, of our debt is actually owned by foreign countries, this is a huge, huge risk for us because uh, if they call the debt, uh, we don't have the ability to pay it. In fact, we're struggling just to pay the interest on the debt. If we default on that stuff and they call it, uh, well, I don't know how that goes uh, because uh, nobody's ever done that. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this could be very bad, actually. I mean, I've seen it done in other countries, but not the United States. And, uh, you know, like I said, if uh, the United States goes, everything else is going to follow. We are the hinge pin uh, holding all of us together. As bricks and all the other stuff come into play, this is a big, big deal that uh, these folks are holding our debt. Um, it it can just it has so many different directions it could go that are not good for us. It's a huge national security risk, bottom line, all right? Okay, now, wait, before I get ahead of that, uh, let's do... Well, let's just talk this. Iran's oil exports climbed to the highest levels in six years. So think about this. All of the sanctions that we had put on them, that we had pulled off of them, uh, look at the position they're in now. They are actually selling more oil than they have ever done in the last six years. That's not good because it drives everything up. 
And uh, look, uh, as we get kind of over here a little further, um, U.S. slaps new sanctions on Iran over the Israel attack. So again, our sanctions aren't going to do anything. We know that. Uh, you can go back to this. And uh, every time we, we slap a sanction, they just find another way to do it. Look what the sanctions did to uh, Russia. It actually it hurt us more than it hurt Russia. And so, but look at, uh, as we look at kind of the oilprice.com uh, news out here, look at this. You've got Ukrainian drones that hit Russia's third largest oil refinery. That's kind of a crazy, crazy thought, uh, but that's going to further impact our ability to buy oil at a low rate. Remember, Flashbang said when it gets to 72, we'll start um, uh, refilling the SPR. It looks like they're going to try to do it anyway. Um, I guess if you're spending money like you're spending it, the, the, the cost really doesn't matter because you're uh, <laughs> you just it doesn't. You just write a check because you're doing it with everything else. So. This is also national security risk, okay? When uh, your SPR is down to two weeks, uh, the lowest level it's been since its inception, uh, you got a big problem on your hands should things go awry, all right? So we talked about the sanctions. Now, this is another key index that we need to be watching, and that is the dry Baltic uh, exchange, okay? And um, that is, uh, it, this is an indicator of, of the flow of goods around the world. Um, this tells you, ships, how full they are, if they're not full. Now, uh, this, if you drop down a little bit, you look at uh, the dry Baltic index over the month, it's down 21%. Is it at its lowest? Definitely not. But you can see it is very volatile, high fluctuations going back and forth. And um, this uh, 18 is not too bad. Last year when we checked in, uh, it got down here. It was around the 1200 uh, area. And I think the lowest we've seen, uh, you can see right here, at that point, it's at 901. Uh, that was in June of uh, 2023. So it, uh, it's got a long way to go to, to hit record lows, but it is still very volatile, something we have to watch because when all of this stuff starts to go red and ships start or stop moving things, then um, all of a sudden you, you can see the world global economy starting to slow down a lot. All right. Okay. Wall Street's fear gauge urges uh, surges as uh, volatility reawakens across the markets. Yeah, let's let's uh, just uh, keep we'll keep moving uh, as we talk about this. This headline right here just came in across the feed yesterday. Uh, Unusual whales put it out there on Instagram, but uh, it says uh, just then the IMF has warned the U.S. Uh, that uh, it's massive fiscal deficits. Uh, have stoked inflation and pose significant risk for the global economy. Again, as I talk about the fact that uh, we've got record levels um, of people holding our debt, and the fact that we are struggling just to cover the, uh, the just the inflation side um, of our debt, just paying the the interest on those debts. It's uh, it's it's gonna have a ripple effect all the way through, and, and the fact that the IMF is now coming out and saying, "Hey, you guys, uh, you're, you're about to cause the entire world to go into a massive recession," is not good. All right. Okay. Now we talk. Uh, we we discussed the fact that our military seems to be just stretched so thin, um, but it also uh, we we're we're running out of things. And uh, the costs are going through the roof. Uh, we can't get the stuff that we need to fight wars. And uh, we continue to give it to Ukraine, who is just shooting like stormtroopers. Uh, but check this out. F-35 to cost $2 trillion as the Pentagon plans. Uh, <laughs> this, this is just an interesting. This is from a watchdog, actually. $2 trillion over the cost of the program. Uh, the interesting piece is uh, that the sustainment cost – include nearly $1.6 trillion. That's a 44% increase from the $1.1 trillion sustainment tag estimate from 2018. So the costs are going up exponentially. But uh, let, I will tell you this, that um, when it comes to the JPO and their ability to um, leverage the supply, uh, the supply base, they do not a really great job. In fact, they uh, slow roll uh, their suppliers big time. Okay. And when they don't pay them on time, it's very hard to uh, to get quantity breaks. It's very hard to get your 
supply chain kind of firing on all cylinders. They want performance-based logistics, and uh, it couldn't be any further from that right now. It's uh, It looks like very much uh, old-school uh, block and tackle logistics uh, solution for this aircraft. So that cost is probably not going down. In fact, they'll probably just buy less aircraft like they did with the F-22 during its heyday. So, okay, let's talk cyber attacks. This becomes very important uh, because this isn't just knocking your internet off so you can't watch TV, all right? This is uh, hitting critical infrastructure uh, perfect example right here. 911 phone systems are down in South Dakota, Nevada, and Texas as these outages sweep across the United States. Yeah, that was more than likely a cyber attack that took something out. Uh, so, you know, this is what they'll do. Comms, like I mentioned, very, very key. If you don't have the ability to, to reach out and touch somebody, you don't know what's going on. It's one of the first things that a foreign military will take out, uh, that and your supply chain, Okay. Now, this is the other piece. I firmly believe these are cyber attacks that are happening. Fire breaks out at a U.S. ammunition factory. These are the folks that are making your 155 millimeter artillery, uh, stuff that's going to Ukraine and uh, stuff that we need to replenish the stuff that we sent to Ukraine because we don't have enough to fight a war. Yeah, so this is a very, very big deal, and it doesn't just stop here in the United States. Look at this. Uh, this also just happened, an explosion at the BAE Systems Weapons Factory as an all-emergency services rushed to the scene. Yeah, this is their artillery manufacturer as well that put out their 155 millimeter artillery shells. All right. Not good, but not a coincidence either. All right. Guarantee those were two strategic cyber attacks. Um, and if you're thinking, how do they get in there and cause a fire? They will, uh, and, and they've shown they can do this. They hack into uh, equipment or machinery, cause it to overheat, it catches on fire. Done. Just like that. So, okay, let's talk Dover real fast. And we got, uh, don't forget, we still have coverage we, in news articles we have to talk about. We're going to talk about the Dubai thing and weather mod here at the very end. So just uh, stay tuned, okay? Uh, look at the 747 coming in and out of this uh, came in from Chicago. This is uh, Dover, and it's headed over to Frankfurt, Germany. All right. And uh, this, I think, I don't know who that is. So um, we'll just leave it. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, this is over in Ramstein. Pretty active. It is a little lighter than it was the, uh, the last time we checked in, but it's still what is coming and going. Uh, notice the camber flights uh, in and out. Again, destination unknown. Several Valor flights. I think those are C-130s. These are C-17s. That one's headed over to um, Crete. And then uh, this one here, this is uh, headed over to Kuwait 747. Like I said, uh, we seem to be moving a lot of equipment into the Middle East based on camos. All right. RZE Poland. I'm not seeing too much other than, uh, you know, the Brits, I think, came in and out. That's an Airbus. Probably bringing some troops or doing a troop rotation. Forward operating base. Again, they leave. Don't want anybody knowing where they're leaving to. Um, but that's it. All right. So then where does that take us? Well, it takes us over here to uh, little man Zelensky. And uh, he is angry that Israel is now being prioritized by the West. It says Ukraine is running out of missiles to defend its airspace. So, um, yeah, he's, again, butthurt level bravo. It's uh, what you have come to expect but listen, he has got something up his sleeve because as, as mad as he wants to get, you can see that uh, you've got uh, Johnson. Somebody's put pressure on him uh, to, uh, to turn $48 billion loose for Ukraine. If he does it, it will be basically uh, his uh, uh, probably signing his ticket to be ousted from speaker position. But Check this out. Here we go. Ukraine may have just crossed Putin's nuclear red line, all right? And that is because they basically went and hit one of their center military command locations 360 miles from the Ukrainian border. And uh, this, yeah, you know what? This could come back to haunt them. Uh, let's see what happens. But uh, you can just feel like everybody is kind of on the edge of their seat watching what is going to happen here. Um, I think... I think, personally, Zelensky will, will try to bait us into a larger war. He'll start attacking Russia deep uh, inside uh, its borders, and uh, that will probably drive Russia to basically just go all in. 
Uh, I still think there is something on the table potentially for a spring offensive as we are now into spring. But I also think it may be contingent on funding. And if the U.S. doesn't get its Ukraine funding, that uh, they may not have what they need to actually go after Russia successfully. And they don't want to risk it for the biscuit. Okay. All right. Here we go. Looking at National Cargo. I just uh, noticed McCord over to March. Uh, this one, ah, I don't know where that is in league. That's Europe. Let's see where these guys are located. So that second flight, I don't see it out there, but uh, I do see this one. That looks to be headed down south. It is, um, well, it's actually climbing. It's at 31,000 feet right now. All right. So let's move on. Did I say climbing? I think that, yeah, it's the arrow's pointing up. All right. This is going to be your Brits. Very hot and heavy into uh, the Mediterranean area, uh, obviously going in and out of Cyprus. That's one of their big locations. And then up out of Norway and uh, what looks to be RZE Poland. You can see they got quite a few on the board here as well. Nothing over the U.S., which is a little interesting. Camber flights, pretty active. Five uh, of those up right now. Uh, one's leaving Kuwait. Just notice the centrally located over the Middle East. Um, the Brits were actually also down here into Africa, but that flight has since landed since um, we started pulling this together. So. All right, here's your Omni. Uh, again, like I said, they've got some stuff going on down in the Philippines. I think Omni's probably handling the flights in and out from Guam over here into um, the Philippines, into Hawaii. And then this is going to be Doha as we talk about what is going on over there in the Middle East. Uh, just to show you, we've got to just notice some of the bigger aircraft coming in and out of Kuwait. Uh, they will land there and move things around. It's the only one that I saw. There were more flights on the board, but they have since kind of vanished off the board. But um, that's a Navy bird right there. All right. Now, let's talk about what's been going on. Let's uh, first and foremost, we're going to look at weather mod. And uh, I will tell you that uh, I've shown you in the past here in Texas how um, the weather mod LLC, it's a company that has little aircraft that fly into the storms and let it rip. Um even being hundreds of miles away from where we are here in North Texas, they see the atmosphere and downrange, wherever that cloud ends up going, that stuff stays up there in the, it doesn't just come right out. It stays in there and it, uh, it stirs things up and it makes it super windy, uh, heavy duty rainfall, uh, hail can come out of that. Um, the storms just get very violent. Okay. I've shown you that. Here in Texas, and I've actually shown you in our area the outcome of that flight and what it did on the ground, all right? 60-mile-an-hour winds, right? It's just crazy. So then we go over here to Saudi Arabia, who has been doing weather modification for quite some time. I've shown you historically what they've done um, near Mecca, Medina, on the far side uh, of, uh, of Saudi uh, where you just see lawn furniture, record floods like chest deep on cars. We're going to look at more of that. Again, this is evidence that when they're cloud seeding, it has a big impact on the ground. Now, this is where they did the cloud seeding. If you can see my mouse moving, uh, just follow your cat or <laughs> whatever's watching my pointer right now um, on the TV. But this is where they were doing it. Okay, And I'll show you the flight and the traces over the last three days. And then this, uh, we get into the impact of this. Now, this I thought was interesting because Sky News came out and said, hey, what is cloud seeding and did it cause record rainfall in Dubai? Well, let me just show you the evidence because I will tell you, I'm going to cover it in far more detail than what they have because they won't have the flights, okay? Now, if you're inside the United States into record uh, rain or you're just seeing crazy weather and these guys have done anything, you need to document it and submit it to Allstate or State Farm or whoever's your insurance coverage because they should be held accountable for doing this to people on the ground. All right. Now, this is Saudi right here. The area I just showed you, I'm going to pause it. Okay. You can see that is uh, Riyadh. I go back over here to this. This is where it is on the map. Okay. And why they are having, um, actually, let me go back to <laughs> my map. This is the location on the map right here, all right? That's where they just did all their, their stuff, okay? And so you go back over here to uh, the weather mod, and uh, let me bring it back over here to Saudi Arabia. 
and you can see the flight, all right? And uh, they loaded it full of stuff right up to the point of uh, almost over Qatar and, and, and that area. But Dubai is the spot they got hammered. Now, let's look at some of the videos of uh, what just took place, all right? Again, that's where they hit, and uh, that would be right here, okay? All right, now let's go into some of these videos. Look at this. This is inside a mall. This is over on Instagram. Look at the flooding in the mall, outside of the mall. Look at this, the water coming in. Absolutely insane. Look at the uh, knee deep in water, right? That's just one video. This is at the airport. Look at, I can't believe they're actually trying to taxi and take off in this. Um, look at the wind, all right? Look at this. I mean, this is, look at the furniture coming off of this, this patio. Is that not insane? All right. Look at the flooding. Yeah. Just absolutely. How many of these cars are now ruined? Eh, you'll probably be able to buy them down in uh, Mexico here in about two weeks. Um, but look at this. Uh, like as it comes in and you can see the sky just opening up and the flooding on the ground. And look how dark it got on the ground in Dubai. Two o'clock in the afternoon, and it is pitch black outside. All right. That's because they sprayed all this stuff up in the sky, and it has made its way over to Dubai. And then look at these cars that just as it got carried away with the surges and the floodwaters. It's insane. All right. And then look at this wind as it just blows the trees and all the stuff. Again, that's all Dubai. That is a direct outcome of them doing cloud seeding, all right? This, I, again, they're taxiing, like, turn around, don't drown, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> that was a joke um, in, in a roundabout way. But I just can't believe that they're actually trying to taxi with these aircraft because you just ruined the landing gear and everything else on, on these aircraft. They're going to have to be inspected, and uh, it's just not good, right? So, yeah, that's just absolutely crazy. All right, listen. That is going to do it for our sit rep today. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. We'll see you next Tuesday for the next sit rep, unless you're over on Patreon, at which you will see uh, more content from me over the weekend. That's it. You guys, be safe. Keep that powder dry. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. You can check out the latest gear and products by selecting the QR code on your screen now or go to monkeyworksus.com.